Hello and welcome. You're watching Jab We Met. We're in Kolkata today at the headquarters of the 200-year-old RP Sanjeev Goenka Group. Mr. Goenka, welcome to Hi Jab Rahul, We Met. Welcome. We meet at a time when India Inc. is in the news in a manner that it rarely is. What you're doing and what you're not doing is being discussed all over. So we're very happy to be here. It's great to be on the show. And there's been so much talk over the last few months over the slowdown in the Indian economy about you know why Indian investors are not believing in the India story as much. You know, as a 200-year-old company and this hugely diversified group, how do you see the current slowdown in the economy? Why do you think the economy has been slowing down in the way that it is? Quite honestly, I think what's happened is that a lot of India Inc. invested very hugely in big capacities five, six years ago. We are all waiting for those capacities to get fully utilized before we do the next round of investments. So it's not a slowdown from a sentiment perspective. It's actually just waiting for the mismatch between supply of capacity and demand picking up actually matching. We heard uh, Mr. Rahul Bajaj say very recently that there is a sense of fear that's crippling India Inc. As one of the leading faces of Indian industry, do you believe and do you agree that there is a palpable sense of fear that's impacting investment decisions? No. I wouldn't like to comment on uh, Mr. Bajaj's statement, but I don't subscribe to that theory that there is a fear or there is any kind of apprehension. I think the structural changes made by the Modi government have been tremendous. And you're going to, it's going to take like another year or two before you see the entire effect of this structural change. So there are two things at play, Mr. Goenka. One of course is why India Inc. isn't investing enough, which you say is because you've got underutilized capacity. The other is about why the economy is slowing down. In sector after sector, all the key high frequency markers indicate for more than six quarters, this economy has been slowing down. Why do you think that's happening? One is on the utilization of capacity coming up to speed. So that's, that's one. And the second thing is the world is going through a slowdown. Mm -hmm. And India is no different. But it's not. There are so many countries in the Asian region, Bangladesh for example, Vietnam, Indonesia, which are growing faster than India is. This whole idea that the world is going through a slowdown, which even the government puts out, isn't necessarily factually correct. You know, but Bangladesh can hardly be a base. I mean, it's like saying uh, Andhra Pradesh is uh, growing, or Telangana is growing, or Karnataka is growing, or not growing. So I'm not sure that is a representative base. So the government has introduced a slew of measures after the budget in a hope to revive the economy. Uh, most importantly, they've reduced corporate taxes, which was supposed to spur investment demand. But we saw, for example, in the recent Credit Suisse report that 90% of the companies were sitting on their extra re uh, earnings. What do you believe the government needs to do more to ensure that the economy bounces back? The reduction of the corporate taxes is a, it's a very positive step. It actually helps corporates to retain earnings, which is a huge big thing. Why? The whole idea is to ensure that investment kicks up, not for corporates to earn more no, money. No, so when you earn, when you have more retained cash, you actually plow that cash But back. if you do, the problem is most companies are just retaining the extra cash in their balance sheets and even admitting so, saying that the atmosphere is not conducive to new investment. Well, so then that doesn't help the Indian economy, that helps all of you of course, <laughs> but doesn't really help the Indian economy. But sir. frankly, as far as I'm concerned, and I know most of my companies, in fact all my companies, we are investing all that money back into capital expenditure. So we are definitely actually investing and growing. What more would you like to see? the government do to ensure that the promise which was made of double digit growth, we are exactly at less than half of the promise. To ensure that we get back to the double digit growth, what would you like to see the government do, Mr. Goelka? Frankly, uh, to my mind, this whole thing of ask, ask, ask from the government, somewhere has to end. Okay. We have to now say that, okay, if there is uh, 
the demand pickup has not been as vigorous as uh, anticipated or as planned. And if it takes two quarters or three quarters for this to sort of uh, catch up, then so be it. No, but what makes you hopeful that demand will pick up in two or three quarters? Because many people like Ratin Roy have written to say that we are virtually in the throes of a reception. If you see manufacturing, for example, almost close to being negative for more than two quarters, one more quarter of negative growth, and then we're in the middle of a recession. You know, frankly, economists have a way of defining and using words and adjectives to define situations. Uh, I think, yes, you are seeing a slowdown of demand in automobiles and uh, cement and but overall if you really see it's a cycle you've had five six years of constant growth and any economy will not see 10 years of consistent growth quarter after quarter but but the expectation was that in a country like india 5% is virtually the base rate of growth even if we didn't do very much the traditional understanding has been that 5% to aega hi aega uske upar kitna ja sakte now we are less than 5% already you know whereas china slowed down to 6% after four decades of uh, very strong growth these are statistics which are reeled off by economists and frankly what is the basis of saying this 5% is the base base yeah. growth rate China is a different situation, India is a different situation and let's not forget when you make structural changes you're going to have some pain and this government is actually making changes at the root. So corporate taxes is one element of actually give, trying to give an impetus in terms of digital economy, in terms of a Swachh Bharat, in terms of Har Ghar Jal, uh, there are so many uh, initiatives they're taking. So, Eventually, when the money goes to the arm admi, that is when consumption will actually go up. And with all these measures, it's a matter of time that the money will actually go to the arm admi. You know, forget what others are doing. You're still confident and bullish and you're using the extra earnings that you have to plow back uh, into the economy. So I want to spend some time now uh, talking about you know, the RP Sanjeev Goenka group's journey. And I want to tell our viewers that we're in fact uh, in the middle of a swanky new office. So this is like a 200 year old journey, which now at this moment is in this new office, which is like a new beginning of sorts with, you know, you wanting to take the group into the future. Absolutely. And I think uh, the idea is not only to consolidate all companies under one roof, but more importantly, signal a change in the way of working, in the way of thinking, in the way that we actually plan for the future. So what I find really interesting about the way you've built your new facility is that you've got so many books, you know, there are lots of these thousands and thousands of books lined up. I haven't seen that in any other corporate office in this fashion. I used to read prolifically. I don't read as much now. But these books, most of these belong to my father. And through this, somewhere I feel that he is with us, he is present here. And books were his soul. So for us, it's in a way his presence in this building. How many books do you have in total? I think we probably have a couple of lakhs, but here there will be, I would imagine, 15, 20,000. Why is it that you have chosen to stay on in Kolkata? You know, so many of the other big business families which originally based in Kolkata at different points, different generations moved out largely to Mumbai. You know, you're one of the last batsmen still standing here. In today's day and age with technology, with uh, everything, you could be anywhere and operate your businesses. Initially, I was here because our businesses were here. And the more I stayed here, I said, you know, it's actually not a disadvantage operating out of Kolkata. But some people who I asked the same question to who are on the other side of the divide who'd moved out uh, actually said that Kolkata just slows you down. You know, it's so inefficient in the manner in which it operates, things don't get done. <laughs> kind of just induces a certain amount of lethargy in all operations. People in Kolkata actually have a great sense of pride in achievement. Mm -hmm. So you, you link their performance, you link their motivation to milestones to targets. 
So for example, when we bought into CSA, there was used to be 14 hours of power cuts in the city of Kolkata every day. So the first thing was to actually try and get them motivated to no power cuts. And when there were no power cuts, they were, oh my God, we've done it, we can do it. I was reading somewhere that you were once with your friends and uh, in, in, in some kind of a place and the lights went off. This is when your family had just taken over and they were all <laughs> ribbing you, saying, you know, this is the guy who runs the Bijli and there's no Bijli. So we were at uh, the Oberoi Grand uh, at a restaurant called The Polynesian and having an oriental meal. And the power went out and Oberhoi's generators didn't come on. And so not only the six friends who I was with uh, sort of uh, got after me, but it was everyone in the restaurant said, you are responsible. <laughs> that was the Yeah, it was like you want to sort of cover your face. And uh, yes, but that's the days that we lived in. And today we actually have the most robust power distribution uh, network in the country. So this is your new baby, your big bet, Nature's Basket. This is next to Fleury's Bang on Park Street. You've got prime location as well. Absolutely. This is something that we are very excited about. This is the new avatar of uh, Nature's Basket, the first one in the reformatted uh, mold. And uh, you'll see many more of these in the country as we go on. So Rahul, you've got to, I'm going to make you do a little bit of a blind test. Okay. So one is a baked tuyam karare and the other is your kurkure. Now you taste and tell me which is which, which is fried, which is baked, which is better, which is worse. Both look the same, so this is, so your focus is on healthier snacks. Us, yes, tuyam is better for you brand and this is in the market. Okay, so you're also going to try? I, I think by now I know. You can look at the thing. I, the I know and I, I know it, so it wouldn't be a fair uh, test. This is big. Am I right or wrong? Wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so what I made you do, Rahul, is something I make uh, everyone do, everyone who comes to visit me. The presumption is fried means it's better. It's tastier, it's more crunchier. It's not always the case. But tell me this, you said your big bets are you know, retail, stores like this. Don't these face a very serious challenge from the likes of Amazon and Flipkart, FMCG? If I can buy all of this on my Amazon Prime or Amazon Grocery, why will I come to a nature's basket to buy any of it? You know, you were asking about the threat from Amazon and online retailers. Of course, there's a question of convenience there. But how would an Amazon compete with, say, something like this. Look at the size of this asparagus. And no photograph can do justice to this, and this is fresh. So there is the customer who will buy online, and there is the customer who will actually come physically and buy. But can I counter that by saying that, okay, for a product I haven't seen, like an artichoke or an asparagus, I may be interested in coming here and taking a look at it because the first time I'm seeing something like that. But if I know what I want, and if I bought it earlier, it's only about a repeat order, it's much easier to buy it online than to make all the effort of coming all the way. You will have both kinds of customers and you will have a certain segment of the market which will be online and a certain segment of the market which will be physical. It's about experiencing also. And I think we are finding more and more customers are coming here and they come to buy one thing, but they actually land up buying five because there's a lot of impulse purchases. So I find it interesting that you've got a live kitchen in the middle of your store so people can try everything that you've got displayed. Your team tells me that you're a good uh, cook, that you like to make your own food sometimes. Would you like to show us your skills, Chef Goenka? I'll try, I'll try. So what's your favorite kind of food? You know, the simplest for me is pasta because it's relatively difficult to go wrong with that. Now, with all this talk of food, I'm famished. We've been up since early in the morning, so we're now looking forward to Chef Goenka's pasta. <laughs> I hope you won't be disappointed. You know, the last person I was with uh, inside a kitchen huh. for Jab We Met was Abhijit Banerjee, another son of Kolkata. 
we went into Jawaharlal Nehru University. He went into a cafe there and started cooking just like just like you are. So you know, I think it has to do with the with the Bengali mindset. Bengali men like to whip up their own food. Yeah. We, we take care of our own stomach. So I hear you're quite uh, foodie. Yeah, I've chosen my physique, and uh, you know, I frankly am fond of all kinds of food, particularly Italian. Kolkata is known for its street food, and here we have Kolkata's best-known businessman feeding us pasta. Do you like street food too? Yes, I do. You can't live in Kolkata and not have uh, street food. So, Chef Anoop, is your sous chef doing a good enough job or not? Looks fantastic. Uh, let me try, then I can come to your ah. conclusion. Yeah, yummy. Yeah, the boss, you know, the boss with the bolo gay yap. I mean, really, it's fantastic. <laughs> So you took over Nature's Basket from the Godrej Group. Your father, in fact, in the 80s, developed a reputation as India's first takeover tycoon in some senses. So this is something which is in the DNA, runs in the blood? My father did a lot. We've not done anywhere near like a quarter of what he's done. But you're itching to I'm itching take to, over. I'm itching itching. To take so over. what are you itching to take over the most? Like what's the one prized asset you'd like to get your hands on? More than prized asset, the sector that I'd like to do is media. Really? Yes. You, you've tried many times over. I oh. have and not succeeded so far. Why do you think it's not worked out? Sometimes I think it's to do with, uh, it'll happen when it will. I'm convinced it will happen at some stage, but uh, so far not. So apart from media, where else are you looking to expand? FMCG. We will definitely expand. Retail, we will expand. So we've just bought into this Ayurveda company, which does, uh, and it's the only Indian Ayurveda company which has 13 US FDA approved drugs. Mm -hmm. They haven't done much with it. And we do believe that that has huge potential. I'd like to show you a section where we make fresh chocolates. So the chocolate... Cheesecakes, chocolates. And if we eat all of this, we'll have to go straight to the gym from the shoot. Worth it. In India, you don't have gifting hampers which are of international quality. This is going to be a very big thing going forward. So as you enter the store, you will actually see a display of uh, hampers and options of gifting. And we do believe over the next couple of years, this can grow into a multi-hundred crore business. This is what you've been working on? Yes, try it. So what, what's your biggest weakness? Chocolates. Ah. I must have chocolates every day. Isn't that the same guy we saw in your office? Yes, I'm very fond of this artist, uh, Ravinder Reddy. And so, I have quite a few of his works. But it's great to have you home. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for having us here. Don't tell me this music is coming from a caravan, Saregama. It is. You know, of all the ideas I think that you've done since you've been doing this business, is this the one that you consider the most cult in terms of iconic status? Absolutely. I mean, it's something that evolved out of a boardroom discussion and a review and it took us one year to actually get the product all perfected. And now, of course, it's taken off. But can I tell you something, Mr. Goenka? This makes no sense. You've got only like some 5,000 songs inside this with a few artists. I could on a pen drive or just on my phone have every one of these songs and more. So for the younger generation, you know, this is like Baba Adam ke zamane ka, it makes absolutely no sense and yet it's such a big hit. It's aimed at a different generation. These are people who can actually just 
with the switch of a button, get access to 5,000 songs without having to do anything else. The structure uh, and the construct of the product is an old Murphy's radio. So it's something that they've seen and they're familiar with. So they're Your not- dad ran Murphy's. My dad ran Murphy. So this product actually is uh, something that's designed not to intimidate. It's technologically savvy. So the older generation, when you want to look for a gift for your parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, this is the perfect product. Mr. Goenka, in the eight years that you've been managing the part of the business that was spun off to you, you know, you've seen the business grow from an asset base of about 6,000 crores to 44,000 crore rupees now. That's huge, substantial growth. What do you believe is your secret sauce that helped you power this growth? We started focusing on operational efficiencies. So my belief is that until every company that you operate is operationally the best or amongst the best, you do not earn the right to grow. So that's, that's one. Then it was about actually making sure that we didn't take too much debt. So yes, it's been a good growth, 6,000 to 44,000 crores by way of assets, 5,000 to 27,000 crores by way of revenues, 300 to 3,300 by way of profits. It's been good. It's been very satisfying. I just love your collection of paintings. There's so much variety and so much focus also on indigenous art. This, what you see here, is my grandfather's collection of Mughal miniatures. Parts of the other things are my collections of contemporary Indian artists. To my mind, this is what a home is about. It's about different people pooling in their choices and all getting collected, becoming like a collective, like a flower. You know, it's different petals which form to make a flower. Taking over a business from a father who had a towering personality is always a big challenge. Is that something that weighed you down initially? What's the biggest lesson you learned from your dad? When you take over something from a man who's a legend, you are weighed down by expectations to begin with. And you have to perform a little harder and a little better. And initially people expect you to be a clone of your father's. He ran business purely by instinct and gut. For me, it's instincts are important, very important. But data is as important as instincts. The one thing I learned from him was relationships, people. How to motivate people, how to inspire people, how to trust people, how to sort of slot people in the right positions. Having worked with him for several years, I think it became easy for me because I just sort of copied what he did. You know, so when uh, your father split the empire in a very clean kind of fashion between you and your brother, Harsh, does that then create a situation where you are comparing like how much you've grown your business, how he's grown no. your business because it's only natural, a certain amount of sibling rivalry? No. We never look at it from that perspective. Uh, I think it's only about what you're doing in your work, in your business. Do you compare turnovers and profits and growth and top lines? And I frankly don't know his numbers also. Really? Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing good or if I'm doing good. That I know. But if you ask me the precise numbers, I wouldn't know it. Well, what is this, Mr. Goenka? The tree of life? It is. It's the Kalpa Vriksh. My wife planted this 37 years ago. It's positioned in a manner that is the center of the house. It's auspicious. And you know, you'll have these red flowers. In the next three weeks, this will be just filled with red flowers and there'll be no leaves. And then it's extremely beautiful. I, I love the way every little thing has a story behind it. You know, this is so typical of Kolkata that you preserve. Usually when houses are rebuilt, a tree would be gone and things would move on. But I love the fact that every little thing has a big story behind it. I wish you all the very best, Sanjeev Goenka. Thank you so much Thank for you, joining Rahul. me on Jabi. An absolute honor being here. Thank you. So Thank much. you.